Hey, what's up? So, in today's video, we're going to be answering some questions. So, uh, why don't you meet me at my office? So, as always, my Patreon supporters are going to get their questions answered first. So, if you'd like to join them and support me on Patreon, I have links in the description below. So, Sun Valley Drive Music is asking what settings I use on the GH5. Now, I don't actually own or really use a GH5, but Whenever I shoot with my GH4, I typically shoot in the Cine D profile and my shutter is typically set at 180 degrees at 24 frames per second. They were also asking the height and angle of my light and that really all just depends on how I'm setting up my lighting for a certain shot. In this shot right now, I have a nice soft source right over here that's being motivated from my window. So Tiff Tate is asking about the new Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro and I have not used that, but that camera actually looks really sick. If you really want the Blackmagic RAW and just be in that whole ecosystem, I mean, I think the 6K Pro looks pretty sick, especially since it has those internal NDs. So Andy McAllister is asking about the Laowa 17mm f1.8. Never actually used that lens, but I do have a couple of reviews on some new Laowa lenses that I'm gonna be releasing on my channel pretty soon, so stay tuned for those. How did you know when you could turn your passion into a career? How long did you have a full-time job while pursuing your creative endeavors? Now, that's a really good question. I actually never had a full-time job in my life, actually. I've worked a lot of part-time jobs while pursuing my passion, which is making videos. I feel like a lot of people jump in to trying to do creative work full-time when they're just not quite there yet. You can jump into trying to be a full-time creator when you haven't really laid the foundation of, you know, having all the skills that you need or, you know, having an actual plan and you can fall flat on your face. And I know that from personal experience. I worked for Parks and Recreation and I was an assistant teacher for a long time. Those are the kind of jobs that I did while I was, you know, pursuing my freelance filmmaking career that I could just do as a stable source of income. So yeah, now I do YouTube full-time and I guess this is my first real full-time job. <laughs> So real quick, I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Now, if you haven't heard of Skillshare before, it is an online learning community for creative and curious people. Skillshare has thousands of classes on so many different subjects like photography, video, design, and it's a great place to go if you wanna gain more knowledge on a certain subject. Now, one Skillshare class that you definitely shouldn't sleep on is YouTube success. Script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. Now this is a class that I was actually pretty excited to take myself because Marquez takes you through his entire process of making a video, everything from researching your topic to editing your footage to growing your channel. So this is definitely a class that I would highly recommend. And the really cool thing is that the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below are gonna get a free trial of a premium Skillshare membership. And even after that membership is done, an annual plan is only like 10 bucks a month. So it's a really good deal. Once again, big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Do you always create a shot list or a script for YouTube videos? How important is planning before you create videos? Yes, I try to plan as much as I can when I create my YouTube videos, but I don't use a script, mostly because I feel like I just never sound natural when I'm trying to read off a script. So I usually just make some notes with some bullet points that I'm trying to hit, and I just try to check those notes every once in a while while I'm making the video. But uh, yeah, I try to plan out my videos as much as I can because I typically need to have a solid plan before I start shooting. Otherwise, it just never really works out for me. How to not get consumed by gear. Now this is definitely something that a lot of filmmakers and photographers struggle with. Sometimes I feel like I used to buy gear just so I can make a video on the gear that I bought. And that's not really what the point of buying new gear is. Like you wanna buy a new piece of gear because it's gonna actually help you make better videos or take better photos. And I think that's one of the biggest things for me is when I made something that I was you know, pretty happy with, regardless of the gear that I was using, that's what was the most rewarding thing for me. So if you're kind of consumed by gas or gear acquisition syndrome, I would say try making more things regardless of what kind of gear you have. If you're saying I can't do this project because I don't have this lens, try doing it anyways, regardless of what kind of lenses you have and see if you can create something that looks great just based on the skills that you have right now and not trying to pin it on not having the right piece of gear. 
And I feel like once you do that, you can actually see that you can create great stuff regardless of what gear you have, because you're actually gonna have to be relying on your skill. And that's really the most important thing anyways. Okay, one of the times I was out here, I saw a bear. When do you use a LUT versus color grading from scratch? Well, I'll typically use a LUT when I'm working with some type of log footage. So I'll use a log to Rec. 709 LUT and then I'll kind of work from there. And if I'm not shooting in log, then that's typically when I'll just, you know, color grade from scratch. What camera has been closest to replacing your GH3? Well, if you watch my last video, which I'll post right up there, you'll know that I have recently switched to the Panasonic GH4. It's a great camera. Uh, it does everything that I need it to do, and I still feel like it's a pretty good budget option for anyone looking for their first camera. Um, there was a lot of other candidates. I was, you know, thinking about going back to the original Blackmagic Pocket. I was thinking about trying an M50, and I do want to say that, like, I might still switch my camera out. I don't think I'm going to stick with the GH4 for you know seven years like I did with the GH3, but I kind of was just. I was ready to move on from the GH3, and I think the GH4 is a really nice stepping stone for whatever I get next. What is your why behind making YouTube videos? What is it that keeps you motivated and gives you the passion to press on? Well, that's a really good question, and I would say what keeps me motivated is all of you. Everyone who, you know, comes back to my channel and watches my videos and, you know, learns stuff from my videos, that's just super encouraging. And also, I still just love making videos like just as much now as I did 15 years ago when I got my first camera. So it's pretty easy for me to stay motivated about something that I'm still really passionate about. Oco fluente você fala português. Eu falo bem, mas eu acho que entendo melhor. Who are your favorite YouTubers? Which YouTubers do you get the most inspiration from? Now, I have a lot of YouTubers that I really like to watch, but instead what I thought I'd do is kind of share some of the smaller channels that I've been watching that I think deserve just a little bit more attention. So Cam Brown is making a lot of really cool stuff, and I think he's based here in Portland, Oregon as well, which is pretty cool. Tamara Gabriel and Tamara's channel has a bunch of stuff that has to do with like filmmaking and Sony cameras. Sam Holland, he has a lot of really good gear reviews, and I think he's an audio guy, so he has a lot of really good audio presets too that I actually use. And Josh Ben Bernalis does some really beautiful looking gear videos, and he talks a lot about the Blackmagic cameras if you're into that. You guys, it is low key cold out here. Would you ever move to Sony or Canon from Panasonic? If so, why? Yeah, I would totally consider moving to Canon or Sony. And the reason being is just because those two brands have cameras that can do things that Panasonic can't. I still think that Panasonic cameras are really good all around hybrid cameras, but a camera from Canon would give me, you know, the dual pixel autofocus and really nice colors. And of course, Sony has been releasing some amazing cameras recently, and they have amazing autofocus and really, really good specs for the price. But right now I'm still sticking with Panasonic, but I could definitely see myself switching to Canon or Sony in the future. Anyways, that is all the questions that I'm gonna be able to answer in this Q&A. Thank you so much to everyone who asked a question and I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you'd like to check out more of my videos, you can click on either side of my face. Anyways, until next time, I'll see you all later. Bye.